hi guys, is I want to talk about what I've noticed over the past three years when giving readings. Did I always know that there were star seed family members around during the readings? No. <laughs> I most definitely did not. And in fact, I didn't know um, that they were around until I became very familiar and comfortable with the guardian angels, um, everyone's team of angels, their spirit guides. That was my first introduction. So I didn't jump right in. I think Ashley can agree with me. We didn't jump right in and see starseed family members around. Um, why, 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 why did we not see them? right out the gate, okay? Uh, I think, in my opinion, now my guardian angel can correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think they didn't want to freak us out. <laughs> so they didn't want to give us more than what we could chew in the beginning, right? So it was really important that we were <laughs> aware of our, the guardian angels, the spirit guides, um, aware of the whole team of angels, what they were doing with the person, helping them with in their lives. Uh, but we were not familiar with star seeds. They didn't come right in out the gate. Hey, Ashley, no, 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 no. Even the very first, oh, I would say four or five um, courses that I ever taught, I wasn't teaching about star seeds or, um, you know, talking about them because, yes. Yes, us being comfortable is important, Ashley says. That's why they didn't come in because we we were not ready for that step yet. So why does most of humanity not see starseed family members or aliens or ETs? Because we really need to be comfortable first, right? They're not just going to come in and show what they look like without us being uh, comfortable. So what was more comfortable, I think, uh, for most people is coming through with one's guardian angels, uh, spirit guides, loved ones, and then the starseed family members really came in during readings, I would say probably about a year and a half ago, maybe two years, and I was kind of surprised. And I was like, what is this energy doing here? I was literally like... <laughs> And they didn't show me the really different star seeds, okay, family members. They didn't show me the really, really different ones, different than human uh, beings, okay? So the first star seed family members that stepped forward, uh, again, my comfort level was taken into top, top priority. So when you think about channeling or seeing these energies, they're they're really they really have your comfort level as top priority okay so the first ones that came through for me were the pleiadians because they were most familiar uh, uh similar in frequency to humans okay so but i was still a little surprised when i first saw them i was like so um, <clears throat> how many different types of starseed family members, ETs or aliens, have I seen around people? I would say probably somewhere around the range of 35 to 50 different ones, but my angels make it really well known and all the angels make it really well known during every reading that there are, it's an endless, there are, there's no end, there's no end in sight as to um, how many different types there are. If we were to say how many different types of grays or how many different types of all different kinds, okay? Does a person only have one different um, star seed that they've incarnated in, meaning vessel, body, experience, or we could say physical body or non-physical, right? So has a soul only tried on one other different vibrational frequency in a physical or non-physical body? No. So the, how many different vessels or non-vessels would we say a soul has tried on before coming onto earth? These are my experiences, okay? After giving around 1,200 readings over the past three years, there is a pattern. There is a... Um, 
there's a definite pattern that I've learned, uh, that I've seen, that I've been taught by the angels. So as far as how many different um, starseed or ET origins that each of us can have, I would say anywhere from one, or if we included Earth, I would say two. So a minimum of two, because you started somewhere and then you came to Earth. Um, and I would say two to seven is what I've seen. So you can, if you're the type of person, and this is what I've come to see as well, there's a pattern. So if a soul enjoys trying out this vessel, trying out over here, this vibrational frequency over here, and then I'm going to try this one, um, the likelihood of them being this way in a human vessel is high. So if you're in a human body and you love to try different things all the time and you kind of bounce around a lot, the chances of you having multiple star seed uh, incarnations is great. That's likely what's happened. You've tried it Octurian, tried it as Syrian, tried it as Laren, tried it as Pleiadian, tried it as maybe a hybrid, okay? So um, let's see here. Uh, if I were to say the most that I've ever seen, I would say uh, individuals having two to three different starseed origins. Not likely am I seeing very often seven. If I see seven, it's some it's rare. It's not often. Okay. Um, so how did I find out that I was a Pleiade? Uh, as how did I find out I was of Pleiadian descent? <laughs> if you want to say that, how did I find that out? Well, I remember just asking my guardian angel. I'm like, well, where have I incarnated from? And she said, Pleiadians. I'm like, oh, Pleiades. She said. I said, okay. And then I said. Um, Another medium had said to me that I had a lot of elemental energy that I had maybe uh, tried it out as a fairy. So I was like, okay, well, that does make sense because I'm not the type of person who can only have one train of thought and house one thing at a time. I'm the type of person that I can house, I can multitask probably somewhere around the lines of like eight to ten different things at once. So that kind of made sense uh, with elemental energy for me. So I remember asking my angel, is that accurate uh, with me? Try and she said, yes. So these fairy type energies um, reside on uh, the Pleiadian planet and my soul decided to try that out. Um, so a hundred times is really nothing in the scope of the eternalness of your soul. You're just trying it out at a hundred times. Um, souls that have incarnated how many times I would say if you were to say a younger soul or a soul that hasn't had as many incarnations we're saying around seven to nine hundred times an old soul um, somebody that's been around the block in many different um, uh, lifetimes uh, is sitting around 14 to 2,000 lifetimes okay mm-hmm you know, I don't know the answer to that because I've only seen uh, the Pleiadian guides looking like Pleiadians. But knowing that these uh, souls coming forth and assisting you in this lifetime have most likely had many different uh, tryons of different vessels, not just Pleiadians, wouldn't surprise me if uh, they kind of had a combination coming in as to their appearance. Why are some of the Pleiadians coming through looking like tall grays? Oh, she's also saying that it's our filter, our perception of what we see them looking like. Um, so it's really um, what we perceive through our filter being our vibrational frequency and our mind. Uh, but nonetheless, it's the vibrational frequency that we are to pick up on rather than secondary is the appearance, okay? So have I ever seen a soul come to me for a reading that has only incarnated on earth? They have never been in another physical or non-physical body. The answer is no. I have always, always seen uh each one of us has started somewhere else and then we started incarnating on earth. And why is that? I'm asking my guardian angel. 
<laughs> she says because we needed the practice run before incarnating on earth tell me about it <laughs> okay so i've never seen a soul only incarnate on earth they've started somewhere else and then they came here now i have seen one person uh have their first incarnation on earth after having multiple different lifetimes as Octurian and Syrian, and this is their first time on Earth uh, as a human. I have also seen uh, uh, people who have come to me for readings that have had multiple different gray lifetimes, and now they're incarnating on Earth. And to say it's bumpy would be an understatement because grays tend to, well, they just don't have um, the same uh vibrational frequency we do they don't have the same emotional range we do the most amount of emotion that i'll get out of a gray out of a gray is curiosity they're curious about us and they're really curious about um well we're so vastly different from them i think that's part of it uh we can also uh, one thing that i remember uh channeling from a gray is that they're curious about how we can birth uh, light beings through our bodies. So we are beings of light and love and we are birthing light through us in physical form and they find that quite fascinating. Not all greys are low vibrational. There are greys here um, trying to assist and help, okay, and um, in the ways in which they know how. It's not the same as, say, a Pleiadian would be helping. Uh, personally, I'd want a Pleiadian helping me. <laughs> Pleiadians are, uh, wow, like, if I were to tell you, they're just like, I don't know, what's a word that I would describe it? Pleiadian, they're heavenly. They're heavenly. They are, um laughter and joy and vibrancy and heart-centered and they are the um they are the ones that seeded this planet so when you think about a pleiadian star seed incarnating on earth it's just going to be easier for you here than say if you were to channel uh you know, or, or sorry, channel, I mean, if you were to incarnate as, say, a Lyran to Earth, because the vibrational frequency, maybe the vessel was com really quite different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And the greys are fascinating. Um, really fascinating. They are unique. Um, there's really no other star seeds similar to the greys that I'm aware of. There's different types of greys. I've seen different star seeds that, or um, I say star seeds, but if you want to say UFOs or UFOs, aliens or ETs. Um, but what I'm seeing are star seed family members, okay? Uh, a fractal of that soul through that vessel that you've had incarnations with through as that alien or ET, PS, we're all aliens, ETs, um, and they are here assisting you with this lifetime with the knowledge that they have and trying to help you here. And I'm seeing more and more as we move along because we have awakening on the planet, we have ascension, and they're really stepping forward and helping us. It's fascinating to, to see why they're here. Why are they here? Um, so when people say, oh, I wonder when we're going to see aliens and ETs, oh, they probably wouldn't want to deal with us. They've been here the whole time, people. They have been here all along. When we say, oh, I wonder if the ETs helped build the pyramids, most definitely. Uh, they probably channeled the information through humans uh, here. <laughs> Uh, on earth on how to build the the uh, uh, the pyramids. It wouldn't shock me in one bit. All right, they've been here forever. They're always here. They're always here. All right, so mm -hmm. that's a great question I've never asked yet, Emma. Do Pleiadians have different like offshoots or hybrids?
I'm getting a no on that, but it's kind of a hazy no. So I'm going to let her explain what that means. The Pleiadians uh, try to keep their vibrational frequency uh, pure and high vibrational and in that vibrational frequency, in that vibrational alignment. If they do, uh, you know, dip off here or there, they will come to Earth. They might try an elemental energy out on the Pleiadian planet, but they're not jumping from the Pleiadian frequency, this soul won't go from the Pleiadian frequency over, say, to a gray frequency because it's too far of a gap. And they like to keep that high vibrational frequency, that purity of that energy. Um, and yeah, now that I think about it, I would say like 10% of the people coming to me for readings have had incarnations as a Pleiadian and a Docturian for example, or if you tried out as an actor and you didn't make it there too long, you tried it out a few times and you realize, I don't, this doesn't resonate with me because you've had like 700 time, lifetimes as a Pleiadian. Um, it's easier for, for Pleiadian starseeds here on earth than it would be uh, for another starseed. But if you have a combination between, say you had a little bit of Octurian, and then you had a little bit of Pleiadian, and then you came to Earth, um, I would still say probably going to be a little bit easier for you with that Pleiadian frequency. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question. How can one release the fear of seeing these beings? You have to let it all go and trust that your team has your back. Your guardian angels aren't going to show you something that's going to freak you out. And your guardian angels wouldn't let them step forward and freak you out. Now, there are starseed uh, family members that have come to communicate through, uh, through me for individuals during readings, and they are vastly different than anything that I've seen. And so what they do is um, they'll come in at a distance, and I'll see what they look like from a distance, and I'll get adjusted to that, and then they'll come, al and then they'll come in a little closer. And then they won't come any further unless I tell them it's okay that they can come in closer towards me. So they don't want to freak me out. Other starseeds won't even let me see what they look like. And those are the ones that I've noticed are from way out, further out away from Earth. And they won't let me see what they look like because they don't want to scare me. And I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> uh, so I get a totally different frequency from them. <sighs> the other thing that happens with them is my chakras fire off in my body and they kind of uh, ache and throb and certain parts of my body will ache because my body isn't used to this vibrational frequency, this energy around it. It's not that they're purposely hurting me or that they mean to do this. It's just a vastly different vibrational frequency and my vessel isn't accustomed to it. And then I ask them, please show yourself to me. And they say, no, we're not showing ourselves to you. And I say, why won't you show yourselves to me? And they say, because we don't want to um, scare you. And I say, okay, thank you. Okay, so they're not going to show you something that you're not going to be prepared for. Chances are, if you start channeling, you're not gonna see them right out the gate until you're adjusted uh, to your angels and your spirit guides. And and really, you may not see a whole lot. You might just feel the frequency at first and get adjusted with that, get adjusted with clear audience, and then you'll move into um, seeing what they want you to see, okay? Uh, I have seen beings that look very interesting. One was like a giant crab-like being that had six legs, kind of a reddish shell. It was like the size of a car. Um, and it came through for an individual and it just wanted to be there for support. And uh, so I asked, what does it do on its planet? And they're very work oriented. They're getting things done. They're working. Okay. They're just focused on work. Um, I've had 
uh, you know, Arcturians. If one has incarnated as an Arcturian, they may have more left brain oriented thinking in this lifetime. Uh, they may have uh, more of an A type personality. They might overanalyze and overthink and be in their heads a lot. Uh, so if your dominant incarnations have been more Pleiadian and then coming to Earth, the uh, indicators there would be more vibrant, heart-centered, you know, life knocks you down, you get right back up. Um, you just have the ability to, I don't even know where it comes from, but it's a vibrational frequency that comes from within that is really high vibrational and it's just like I knew the moment I came in on Earth, I'd been here many times before. I wasn't looking up at the sky and saying, geez, I wish someone would take me away from here and my home is somewhere else. That wasn't my primary thought pattern as a Pleiadian. My, my primary thought pattern growing up was, I'm here to have a good time. I'm gonna enjoy a lot of food. I'm going to enjoy the physical body, if you know what I mean, uh, with uh, special partners that you know I've enjoyed uh, being with in this physical vessel and I'm going to party, I'm going to dance and I'm going to have as much fun as I can and then when we go on to you know substances that is an additional fun time <laughs> but one also has to know when to rein it in and realize when they're damaging the physical body and I had to to learn that the hard way because I'm just full throttle um, getting older has been a benefit to me because it has slowed me down. Uh, what were some of the complaints from my friends growing up? Uh, you talk too much. You just talk too much. I could tell I irritated people just by being me, uh, by having maybe more of a higher vibrational frequency. And others were just like exhausted with me, like go away, you know, uh, because... <laughs> Ashley's just laughing it up because they're, you know, maybe their starseed origins is different and they're having a little bit of a hard time here or maybe they're just um, used to a lower vibrational frequency through life and here I come along and they're just like irritated by my frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer wants to know about an orange spaceship that she saw three years ago. Visitation. Light filled, high vibrational visitation from souls who have uh, incarnated with you through other vessels other than human. Okay, so what is that? She knows what they are. All right. So Jennifer... Go down the list of what you know your starseed origins are and then um, and then really see which one's highlighted and that's who came to visit you. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a great question, Jewel. What star system are the tall whites from? They're saying Pleiades, but they also travel around to different star systems, such as the Orion, uh, the Orions. Oh, they travel around a lot. Um, is there a star system they haven't been to? <laughs> They're laughing. Pretty much no. They can go anywhere they want. Um, so that's the answer on that one. So... Yeah, the star, the, the tall whites came through a channeled video I was watching once online and they came to communicate with me and this is in the very beginning of channeling and I had been channeling pretty good for about 10 years but I was still practicing, the energy was much slower back then, don't compare where we are to then because we're in a totally different frequency now. But when they came in, they came in so strongly, it, it took over my entire head and my mind went blank, black. And then I came back online and it freaked me out. And I said, I'm not interested in communicating. And you kind of took me over there and I'd like you to leave. And they said, sorry, we're sorry. 
and they were just kind of waiting for me to allow them to talk through me. And I was like, leave. And they did. Okay. So if you don't like anything, they leave and your team will ensure it. So they've come back to channel through me later on. And, uh, you know, te telepathy is their first language. They don't use the mouth, so they just can easily come into your mind and telepathically communicate. But their frequency is really strong, and um, it can be, you know, it can be a little bit much. So sometimes you have to hold your boundaries. But they don't mean any harm by it. It's just that um, they'll just need to come in more gentle next time. That's what it is. Um, I remember this alien showing up in my friend's house, um, and... She said, oh, I got another alien in my house because she was such a bright light and she could channel. They could see her. And uh, I said, oh, oh. So I, I tuned in with her and then it showed up in my house because I was tuning in and looking for it at her house. And we were talking about it and it knew that. So it shows up in my house. So I described to her in detail what I'm seeing. Three fingers, light blue skin, looks like a gray, but it's not a gray. It's a bit taller and more of a wider head. And the second it came into my home, it looked right over at Archangel Michael. Like, is he allowed to be here? Because once he showed up in my home, he realized that Big Mike was in my home. And he was like, and uh, you know, just looking over, making sure he's not in trouble. And so I asked what he was doing and he said he could see our light and he was curious about us. And that was it. That was the only reason why he came. And it was fascinating. So I described him to a detail to my friend and that's exactly what she was seeing. We were both seeing the exact same ET. It was really fascinating. All right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Are our current emotions or some of our behaviors somehow directly uh, correlated to our other incarnations as starseeds? You bet they are. 100%. Because you see, you take on that vibrational frequency and then you come into a human vessel and you still have that frequency. You're a culmination of all of them, right? So... For some, it's just frustrating and irritating to be here on Earth in this frequency. It's much lower in vibrational frequency. You know, in other vessels, they were able to move things with their minds and telepathically communicate. Now they're in this vessel and they feel very lost and discombobulated in a low vibrational frequency. Maybe they were able to heal themselves very easily and, and had much more of a healthy vessel. And now on Earth, they they don't remember or know right away how to do that um absolutely no doubt in my mind at all and i've really seen a pattern of that um you know star seeds or souls have been called to earth in order to help with this mass awakening in order to help with awakening themselves lifting and raising of the vibrational frequency by monitoring your own thoughts your own behaviors your own belief systems and then as you move forward, um, you start to shift and lift and raise in vibrational frequency. And as you lift and raise in vibrational frequency, you are directly impacting the collective consciousness here on earth. So uh, many times when people come to me for readings, they're like, why did my soul come here? And the number one reason, although there may be many other reasons, the number one reason why you chose to come here is to help lift and raise the vibrational frequency here to help with this ascension process and awakening here. That is the number one reason. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so hybrids, um, in my knowledge, I'm just going to tell you what I know about hybrids and then maybe my guardian angel can fill in a little bit more. Hybrids are created in order to have more expansion and growth for a soul. So with greys being the way greys are, where there's not much emotional, well, there's no emotional range at all. So when a soul incarnates repeatedly into a grey, they're learning in a different way. Um, and their capacity for growth is limited because their emotional range is very limited. So then they decide to um, 
you know, create hybrids with humans. Um, and yes, that is, that has been going on. Uh, and I've asked several times and I've gotten the same answers several times. Um, but, okay, I know this is really, really hard for some of us to understand this, but a soul will make an agreement to that um, uh, abduction lifetime in order to um, be a part of this hybrid project in order for souls to incarnate through hybrids and be able to further. Um, there was another medium that explained it to me back when I was 21 and I knew very, virtually nothing. I was at this group gathering and I said, why are they abducting people? I was all kind of irritated about it back then. And she said, because if you think about the greys, they can only go so far. Picture a giant wall and a high, high vibrational frequency. Um, you can uh, grow towards that with your emotional range and expansion. But the greys can't expand over this wall. So they keep repeating the same lifetimes in the same vessels without that expansion and that growth. So the they... Um, have it's been agreed upon everybody's agreed upon this to do this hybrid pro project in order to have more expansion and more emotional range would you like to say anything else on that so that they can reach higher vibrational states anything else on that it's more um, detailed than this much more detailed than this this is the base basic uh, description of why hybrids um, exist or why that is allowed but it is true that souls will sign a contract to go through those experiences in order to participate or be a part of some of the souls some of the humans are abducted when they shouldn't have been okay but that's a small percentage and she's saying that this abduction period is uh, uh, come to a close. She says there's, if there are, there's not many. This is not something that's regularly happening now. And it's, and it's going to completely come to a close um, as we move along on earth here with this, this ascension and um, awakening paths ahead. There's so much more detail and depth she could get into that. I should really do a video on that because I think that would really help. Um, but really, for the sake of time, we're not going to go there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are greys only in uh, doing hybrids with humans? No. There's multiple other species that greys are hybriding with. And I know that they don't procreate like we do okay they have these facilities where they have these sacks and you know, think of the matrix <laughs> but maybe not that much, not that intensive but um these sacks where they take splice the dna is what i'm hearing splice the dna's uh, dna and then they procreate they're very advanced in this way of doing things they can travel very quickly they can go where they want when they uh, yeah oh, okay um when they come here they're observing us like uh you know when say you were to go out and see like an amazing cool animal on earth you're going on a safari <laughs> the ti tigers and the lions oh my god and we're in our little truck right except that the greys are coming here and they're ufos and they're just observing this amazing, interesting species. They find it fascinating and they're just curious. Okay, they're on a safari. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say that, but honestly. Mm -hmm. No, your Sarsi family does not give you your soul name. Um, who gives the soul name? Um, it's based off of your vibrational frequency and it's given to you at the time of creation as source is continuously expanding and growing and uh, with that expansion and growth you are then created but you are you are a part of that totality or whole of source 
God, light and love, universal oneness. So you, it is, you've always been and you will always be. And um, if we wish to have a name relayed, our soul's name, we can do so through our higher self. Oh boy, so many questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, she's, uh, you're curious about the Lemurians and, um, or ones that from Atlantis are from the Pleiades? I'm getting a yes and a thumbs up. No. Nope. That's a yes. Uh, very high vibrational. Except the, the Lemurians have stayed here all along. All right. All right. If I were to say the number one top star seed that I see the most when I give readings, it is Pleiadians. Right second is Octurians. And then we have Andromedans, Lyrans, um, hybrids, grays. How many times have I seen a gray during a reading? Once. And I've heard of a second one um, that a friend of mine channeled for. So it's not something that I'm seeing very regularly and I think because it's such a vastly different vibrational frequency and it would be quite difficult for that frequency to go from there into this vessel here in this frequency, it's not, it's not commonplace for me to see it on a regular basis. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, with angels, I see uh, like incredible white light, um, sparkle trails, orbs, flashes of light, all in white. If I see elementals, that can range, um, you know, orange uh, to blue. I've seen blue, copper colored. Um, so you might be seeing a lot of fairies around you, Emma. What are all these different colors that Emma's seeing around her? Is it, because so we'll narrow it down. Are these starseed family members? No. Are these angels? No. Elemental energies? Yes, yes, yes. Thumbs up. So you've got the fairies around you. Fairies? And other elementals, brownies, um, and, uh, oh, they're putting it in my head. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of elemental energy around you. Sprites, that's what they're saying, sprites. <clears throat> their parents and their energy, but their energy will come in with the angels, so that makes me more comfortable. Um... And I've just become accustomed to uh, communicating with different energies, so it doesn't concern me. And if there's anything to be concerned about, then the angels will signal that to me. So, and that's only really happened once or twice out of over a thousand readings. So really, um, with that being said, I'm not worried or concerned at all. So I'm going to give you an, I'm going to give you an example of what it was like to give a reading where the angels um, uh, gave me a tightness in my body, a, a, a warning signal to not listen to these ETs that were hanging out in my home that were around this individual. Okay, so I'm channeling for this individual. He has felt like committing suicide for 15 years. He smokes two packs of cigarettes a day and he drinks a lot of alcohol. And so when I was channeling for him, um, it was apparent that I had two reptilians in my living room and I knew that, and they were kind of like laughing with each other. And I looked over at Archangel Michael and Archangel Michael gave me the cue that he was not happy with this energy there, but the reptilians were trying to like talk their way, sweet talk me. Oh, we're here to help him with this, that, and the other. But the angels pulled me back energetically and said, pay attention, gut feeling, a tight gut feeling in your body. Pay attention to us. They are not here for anything good. They are here running amok. 
And so I said to the gentleman, would you like these two energies removed? And he said, yes. And the second he said, yes, Archangel Michael put his head down like this and he charged them in battle gear. Not like there was much of a battle though. <laughs> and you should have seen the looks of these reptilians. They were like, and they were gone in one second gone. Uh, Archangel Michael removed them. And the feedback from this gentleman right afterwards up to six months down the road was he no longer felt like committing suicide because he had these energies running amok with him and putting that in his head and him feeling depressed. He would cut his cigarettes right down to half a pack and he was hardly drinking alcohol anymore. And I was like, yes, that's awesome. So you don't have to worry about anyone running amok. Why? Because you're going to call Archangel Michael into your house to come live with you and be your spiritual bouncer. If you haven't done that yet, do it now. Yes, please. That's all you have to say. It's done. Done. He covers everything. And two is if anything is running amok here, I like to be notified and then I'd like you to remove it. Thank you. That's all you have to say. You just have to say it once. I don't have to sit here and surround myself with white light. And then I'm going to sage my room. And then I'm going to put some crystals on myself. Because where does that stem from, that frequency, by making those requests? It kind of comes from a little bit of a fear. So ask your team to cover you. And you're covered. That's it. And if there's any issues, notify me and let me know. But I don't have any issues. I, ne I just don't have any issues. Now, some souls who incarnate on earth, they are going to have lifetimes where they are meant to learn through being a little bit harassed by spirit or ETs. So that's the other thing I've noticed when they come to me is that their soul signed up for this or in order to get them off the drugs, uh, here's another scenario and I've seen this a number of times. They're, they're awakening and they're ascending, but they're not cutting the alcohol or the cocaine or the weed out. So in comes um, high vibrational frequency uh, will allow low vibrational frequency to pester or harass them in order for them to th uh, let go of this uh energy of uh, substances which is no longer serving them it has to go so they get harassed to the point where then they come to me and then we talk about why they're being harassed and what they need to do in order to remove this harassment from happening lift your vibrational frequency if that means you clean your home and get it decluttered um, be pay acute attention to your thoughts, get some counseling, remove the substances. You do whatever it takes to lift your vibrational frequency because as you lift your vibrational frequency up, low vibrational frequency, whether it's in ET form or any other form, cannot, it's just not a vibrational match. It's just, it's just not going to see you or it's just not going to be wanting to even be around you. So the key is don't be fearful don't have anxiety about this um, and don't be worried. If there's something happening, there might be a purpose and a reason to it. Some people have actually woken up to realizing there's more around them than what meets the eye in the 3D based on some harassing. And so that harassing served its purpose in order to help that person wake up. And I've had that happen um, recently when somebody came to me for a reading and it, and that was all transpiring in order for them to awaken. They wouldn't be where they are now without that, without that energy being around them do, doing what it's doing. <clears throat> all right. You know, it's so easy and fluid to chat with your starseed family members. It's just like chatting with your angels. It's just a different frequency in a different form. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh, we're all star seeds. I haven't met anyone that's not a star seed on earth yet. Now, that's not saying that there aren't some. Some souls have only incarnated on earth. I just haven't met them. How many people have only, how many souls have only incarnated on earth? <laughs> My guardian angel's like this. Oh, you know, just a handful. She's counting it on her fingers. So there's not many. We start somewhere else and we get our feet wet in another vessel, whether it's physical or non-physical. Oh, and, and for me, Pleiadians are very high vibrational. So then you can take that high vibrational light and bring it into this frequency here on earth to help you with your incarnations here. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what things do Pleiadians do here on earth? They're helping with the uh, the matrix, um, out with the old, in with the new. They're helping to lift the vibrational frequency. There's like a grid around the planet and it's all shifting and they're helping with this. Um, they're helping lift our vibrational frequency, our thoughts, our behaviors, the foods that we eat. The foods that you eat play a role in your vibrational frequency. If you eat toxic, low vibrational type substances or foods, that's going to directly affect your vessel and your vibrational frequency. So they're here assisting us in treating our bodies good, eating whole, like whole food diet, like high vibrational foods, removing chemicals, processed foods, sugary foods, sugary, like they're showing me like soda pop. Uh, Claire, so here's the question. Um, Claire, uh, I want you to sit with a still mind with me and ask, uh, have you incarnated on Earth uh, during the Atlantis times? Is this where your soul has incarnated in, the, in previous lifetimes? Okay, Claire, so you go ahead and tell me what you're getting. Are you getting a tight pullback or are you, is your body nice and relaxed? That will signal a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. Well, from what I've experienced is we don't have a representative here assisting us as a starseed family member from each of our incarnations. Uh, mine, I have three Pleiadians, but I, that's, that's it. That's what I have. Um, so others will have, you know, maybe an Octurian, even though they've incarnated as a Pleiadian, they only have one Octurian with them. So it just depends on what that person needs in that lifetime. If the person's overthinking, overanalyzing, and worrying all the time, then I'm pretty sure a Pleiadian is going to come forward as a starseed family member. Maybe you've incarnated as a mother, child, or a sibling, and they're going to come through and help you with that in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Will we ever be able to incarnate? The answer is yes. Sherry knows. <laughs> she knows everything, Jewel. Okay, so I'll say it out loud for everybody else. Will we be able to incarnate here without uh, going through the veil of forgetfulness? That's where we're moving towards, she says, when we're ready. we It's a step-by-step -step progression. Ascension It has to be a step-by-step -step progression and communication with spirit channeling, opening, veil thinning, and then coming in and out as we please. We can come and visit Earth uh, in the physical or non-physical as we choose in future lifetimes or future period. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do souls sign contracts? It's an agreement made. And it's taken, it's like an agreement that's made and it's listed off the contract and then the soul agrees to it. 
and it's kept as a like a vibrational frequency. You know how your thoughts are a vibrational frequency. Every time you have a thought, that's a that's a frequency you're you're emitting out of your head. It's a signal. So if there's stuff in your life you don't like, I would go right here first and say, what are you emitting? So if you have a lack thinking, oh, and I'm, oh, woe is me, I don't have enough money, then look and see if that's more of what you're creating, more of, more of those thoughts, more of that experience in your lifetime. So with this, it's an agreement made by thought form, and it's a vibrational frequency that's kept and held. There's no pen and paper in spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to move down and see if that's perfect, Claire. That's exactly what I'm getting to. So that is the answer. You want to ask your starseed family member a, a question, you can, or your angel a question, you can. Okay, so I want to do a little uh, practice with everybody. I do this in the courses that um, I do as well. I want everybody to sit and very relaxed, whether you're watching this live or afterwards makes no difference. There's no time or space constraints for your starseed family members at all. As soon as you're about to do this, they will come and step in. So I want each of us to sit very quietly with a quiet mind and observe a feeling, an emotion, a sensation, an energy wash over you. Your mind, your goal is to have a quiet, still mind, okay? And then I want each of you to type in the comments what you're feeling. It could be peace. It could be love. It could be excitement. You could maybe see or hear clapping. You could get nothing at all because I've been there too where you get nothing. But I want us each to practice a message that will come through each of us from our starseed family members. One of them will step forward and give us this message. And I want you guys to type, what are they relaying through you with your quiet mind? So let's do that. important to let go. Channeling isn't about trying, it's about letting go. You might get a sensation in the body. You might find your heart chakra is opening and expanding. Strength. I love that. Sangeeta, strength. Okay, so I'm going to say what is coming through me as each of you are sensing what your starseed family members are putting through you as far as emotions, thoughts, feelings. Okay, that's a message for you. <clears throat> Mine is, we love you eternally forevermore, dear one. We are lovingly supporting you guiding you and helping you and assisting you through this lifetime. We love you forevermore. Thank you. And they're washing me with love. Lots of love from the top of my head all the way down through my body. Oh, that's so great. So Amanda, you're feeling happy and excitement in your throat. How awesome. If this goes and starts to open up, then somebody's attempting to talk through here. And it's our job to just be still and allow the words to form. And they're excited about something. What are they excited about? They're excited probably just that you're picking up on their frequency and their thoughts. They're excited maybe they might be able to get through your throat chakra and form words. Claire. I got the feeling of joy and happiness washed over me. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool, eh? Okay. Started to smile suddenly, so I guess joy. 
perfect. Many times when I'm channeling, I'll, I'll just, oh my God, I want to smile. And it just radiates out of my face. I can't help it because they wash me with their emotion, their state of mind, if you want to call it. So when you're getting that smile, that's because they're smiling. They're happy. And you're picking that up and it's forming on you, on your face. Focus on joy, not on worries. Don't you just love that message, Christina? Emma, excitement, love, and a huge amount of energy from the top of my crown. That's where they came in for me too, right through here and washed me right over. But they might come for somebody else off to the side or from behind. Tina, calm acceptance. I love that too. Lisa, I got the Beatles song, Hel Hello. Do you know what's so weird, Lisa, is I had a Beatles song in my head like three days ago and I thought, that's weird. Why do I have that in my head? But that's a perfect song. They're saying hello to you through the lyrics of a song that is rotating in your mind. Isn't that cool how they can do that? They can put a song with certain lyrics and words in your mind, and that is the message. <sighs> Very cool. Jewel, my head feels tingly. I feel calm and peaceful. I love it. So when you ask for communication, so shall it be. Ask and ye shall receive, as the angels often say. So if you ever want to communicate with your starseed team, sit quietly and allow them to form the emotion, the feeling over you. And what would be the next step after that? It'll be thought forms forming in your mind, but you aren't the one forming them. That's called consciously channeling. And it may sound like your own internal voice at first. It might not sound like your starseed family's voice, it'll sound like your voice. And then over time, it will shift and change to their pitch and tone as you open and expand further. Emma saying she's also got a lot of joy and happiness, heart expansion and pressure on the throat. Fantastic, fantastic. Cynthia didn't get anything yet, but we'll try this exercise. Thank you. Perfect. Cynthia, for years I got nothing. P.S. <laughs> It's just a matter of practicing. The more you practice and tune in, whether it's with a deck of angel cards or just sitting and sensing their frequency, the more you open and expand, the more you practice. Check in with them. Uh, when you're coming out of meditation or you're first waking up from sleep, when your mind is nice and quiet. So this is a prime time to do so. I think this is just brilliant that each of you are picking up light pouring in through the crown. Tell me about it right through here. I'm getting it here, but they're also opening, expanding my chest. My chest just feels like it's just really opening, expanding as they're opening my heart chakra. Why are they opening my shock, my heart chakra? To bring through the expression of love so that I'll pick up on the love. And they're also opening, expanding to be for me to be open to the vibrational frequency of love, opening my heart. How cool is that? Oh, there we go. As I'm talking about the heart, your heart expansion and buzzing around your lips. But it's very subtle. How cool is that? The throat chakra is here. And so any tingling here would not be a shocker if the energy came in here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So it's all a progression. I wasn't born like this. I wasn't one of those mediums that was born like this. It just took trying my best to stay in the present moment, relaxing, going with the flow. Nobody in spirit is fearful. Nobody's worried. Nobody um, has fear. So with that being said, as I went and moved along, I said to myself, well, I'm the only one, so what am I going to do about it? Clearly, I'm the odd man out here. 
Uh, so once you realize that, you decide, well, I'm just not going to live my life in fear. I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to lower my frequency like that. And I'm going to do the best that I can to shift myself up and out of worries and fears as they come. Because uh, we're human. I'm not going to stay there for as long as I used to. And I'm not going to dwell on things like I used to. And I'm not going to overanalyze things as I used to. And then you soon will see that you are lifting in vibrational frequency and then it's hard to hold a low vibrational thought. That's when you're shifting in frequency into a higher dimensional way of being. So when people say, are we going to be in the 5D in this lifetime? Well, can, how long can you hold um, high vibrational thoughts for without any worry or fear? So if you can do that for half a day, I think that's the longest I've made it, three or four hours. And that was when I was just really blissed out in the, in the moment and in that frequency. But if you can do that for the rest of your life, then I guess we'll be in the 5D. Yippee. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everybody's getting it on the top of their head. You know what I notice? I think the starseed family members love to come in through the top of the head. That seems to be a dominant theme. So any pressure up here, I think, is a key indicator. All right. So thank you for joining me. I know that was a lot of information. That is like three years of information that I just relayed to you. Um, and like 1,200 uh, sessions channeled of consistent information that I have been relaying to others. And there's a pattern, a consistent pattern. And those are the patterns that I've learned over the years. So have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you later. Bye.